Welcome to City of This Week, I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in this week's show, we join Northern Taiwan Tima as they travel to Jinmen Islands to host a series of free clinics for local residents. Next in Malaysia, University of Malaya successfully completed its third simulation surgery and holds a ceremony to honor their silent mentor's selfless giving. And we meet a hardworking city volunteer from Taiwan's Tainan, Liang Jinzhu, who has been promoting evening recycling in his community. We start today's show in Taiwan. Team of doctors often travel to remote areas to safeguard the health of those in need. Recently, 87 team of medical staff traveled to Jinmen's two main islands to hold free clinics. Separating into two teams, one held a free clinic at a local gymnasium on Xiao Jinmen, while another visited a nursing home at Greater Jinmen. First, however, let's take a look at a special visit Dr. Ying Guang Da paid to a 90-year-old senior who has been on his mind since last December's free clinic visit. Arriving at Xiao Jinmen, Taiwan, Jinmen doctors are returning to conduct their twice a year free clinic. Dr. Ying Guang Da took time to make a special visit to Grandma Chen, whom he met last December. The then 90 year old senior had fallen into a coma and her family members had lost hope. However, Dr. Ying strongly suggested sending the grandma to Jinmen Hospital for further treatment. Now the senior has recovered and is doing well. <laughs> Grandma Chen's family is thankful for the doctor's assistance, while the senior herself says she's going to live to over a hundred to reciprocate. I just helped diagnose that a sudden change in her condition should be taken to a larger hospital to be looked at. As there is only one hospital on the island of Xiao Jinmen, when Tima holds her free clinics, many local residents will show up. At the event held at the gymnasium, many medical departments were available, including acupuncture and ophthalmology. The so-called affluent diseases can be found in the remote island regions of Taiwan as well. The situation shows that Tima Free Clinics cannot delay their care. City often faces change-ups, and how to adapt to these changes is the challenge. Local team and medical staff also participated in the free clinic, together safeguarding the health of their community. Meanwhile, the other team and team visited Sunrise Nursing Facility. Upon this return visit, residents no longer shy away, but are glad to see city volunteers and medical staff. On every return visit, we see improvements in the oral hygiene care, so it makes our efforts worthwhile. Dentists remind each patient of the importance of keeping their teeth healthy by brushing. Normally, eight minutes after we eat, dental plaque will start to form on our teeth, so plaque disclosing agent can indicate where plaque is located, and if we have not brushed cleanly, it teaches us how to brush better. No matter who the patients are in the free clinic, city volunteers and team and doctors alike put their hearts and efforts into making sure everyone's health is seen after. Continuing with Taiwan's Northern Tima Team's free clinics that happened recently in Jinmen, a free clinic was conducted for the first time near the Chongling Tunnel, a local tourist spot in Jinghu Town. The tunnel area is at the center of Jinmen Island, thus accessing the city free clinic was easy to island residents, which is why there was a large turnout. Here in Jinmen, Taiwan, among the traditional southern Fujian architectures are secret wartime tunnels and military facilities. This is the first time the northern Tima team is holding a free clinic near the Chongling Tunnel, a local tourist attraction. So far, the free clinic here in Chongling has been successful. The residents responded enthusiastically, so this will definitely improve the health of local residents. A few people used Facebook to spread the message that Ziji's free clinic was coming to Jinmen. On my own Facebook post, there were over 100 people who liked it. We also asked Jinmen Daily newspaper to help us spread the message. I read about it in the newspaper. My neighbor was here this morning and called to inform me as well. Not only by word of mouth, volunteers also asked the nearby eight boroughs to make the announcement publicly. At the end of the day, the clinic served 117 islanders. 
Recently, members of the Qishao class and volunteers from Tainan, Taiwan visited 450 seniors at the Bai He Veterans Home. Through the event, the children experienced the joy in bringing ha others happiness. But first, let's go to Xiamen, China to join volunteers on their trip to the Welfare Center where they visited elders there. Seizing the opportunity to give, a teacher also brought her students to join in the visit. Here's more. The time of month most anticipated by seniors here at the Welfare Center is the day of Titi Volunteers' visit. Volunteers give the seniors a massage and trim their nails, bringing hearts closer together. One teacher even brought her students to bring some cheer to the seniors. What these seniors need most is emotional support, so I appreciate Titi Volunteers for bringing spiritual food on behalf of our seniors. The room lights up with a joyous atmosphere as volunteers sing to cheer this grandma up. The elders are so happy every time you are here, and your gestures don't just extend to one nursing home, but many. Your efforts are really commendable, and I'm very thankful to all of you. The volunteers' care not only warmed the hearts of these seniors, but also made them feel like they were right at home. Meanwhile, here in Taiwan, Tsi Shaos from Tainan have arrived at the Bai He Veterans Home, bringing joy to share with the seniors. When we come visit them, they feel comfort. They know they have companionship. This grandpa wasn't so involved in the beginning. After a while, he opened up and began interacting with the kids. Seeing the rambunctious children dancing and singing, the seniors' faces light up with smiles. The children's genuineness is like a ray of sunshine shining into their hearts. I'm very happy. I hope you will come more often. We can care for them and chat with them. Seeing the smiles on the seniors' faces, the children now realize the joys of giving and are ready to pay this love forward in the future. Moving to Southeast Asia, the University of Malaya is the first university worldwide to be a part of the joint collaboration with Taiwan's Tiji University Silo Mentor Program. Recently, Doctors in Training completed its third surgery simulation workshop, which was followed by a solemn ceremony to pay tribute to their silent mentors. <laughs> As the song resonates throughout the hall, tears fall from Tung He Shui's face. Just before she left us, she told us that she is not afraid of death. During her lifetime, she didn't have a lot to contribute to society. So she wanted us to donate her body to the University of Malaya for their surgery simulation. I think she made the right decision. Today, medical students of the University of Malaya are holding a ceremony to pay tribute to the silent mentors after having completed their third surgery simulation workshop. When I made my first cut, I unconsciously touched her hand as I was afraid she was in pain. I'm truly grateful to my silent mentor for making this opportunity possible for us. The opportunity not only inspired medical students, but also brought to light the potential of the medical profession. It was awkward for the experienced doctors at first, but after attending the surgery simulation workshop, they realized that it is actually very practical learning. Then when I see the efforts my students put in, especially when they were cleaning the cadavers, I was really moved. As the first surgery simulation training center overseas, the biggest difference with Tsuji University is that the University of Malaya faces many challenges of the country's diverse culture and ethnicities. Various groups have also extended a helping hand to fund this program. The Tsuji Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter donated a rapid freezer to the value of 100,000 Malaysian ringgit, which is the equivalent of approximately 31,700 US dollars. Despite the challenges which lie ahead, the selflessness of these silent mentors will be the medical students' biggest driving force in the months and years ahead. Recently, Indonesia's Batam City volunteers held a volunteer training course to introduce the city path to newly inspired residents. Meanwhile, TIMA members also held a gathering to share their experiences and learn from one another. Through spreading the seeds of love, Batam Island is sure to be one filled with like-minded bodhisattvas. 
seeing their guests arrive, city volunteers in Indonesia hurried to serve tea to these new trainees who had previously came into contact with the organization and are now inspired to join its ranks. I will follow Master Jenkins' footsteps to help not only those of the same religion, but also those of different faith. Helping others does not disobey any religious doctrines. The comedic sketch brings everyone to laughter as Batam Tsuji volunteers hold another tea gathering to give those who are constantly away from home time to rest. When I first came in, I was a little bit embarrassed as it's been a really long time since I have participated in an event. But once the program started, I felt fine. I was moved by the sketch. It was a good message. Returning to their spiritual home, letting go of worries at the door, everyone shares and learns from one another. A team of doctor talked about when he first joined Siji and the setbacks he encountered and the reason he continued on with the organization. Normally doctors are a bit proud. They will think joining Siji is giving their service to the NGO. However, we will explain to them there is so much more for them to learn by joining. Four doctors recently have joined the ranks of Tima. With Tima, we can help each other during the free clinics, as otherwise when we hold free clinics on our own, there's no other professionals to help out. Tsuji people have been hard at work planting deep roots here on Batam Island, hoping to cultivate more like-minded talents to help spread Tsuji's great love. Tsuji's scholarship program in Indonesia has continued to see the fruits of success. Today we bring you the story of former scholarship recipient Lin Han Long, who is now a doctor serving at the Tenkaren City Hospital. Since Lin's parents divorced when he was 10, he and his father have had to rely on their grocery store income to get by. Struggling to make ends meet, Lin once felt helpless about the possibility of completing his studies. It wasn't until Lin read about the Buddhist NGO's financial assistance campaign in City Monthly that he applied for the New Shoot Scholarship Program through the Indonesia chapter. With City's aid, Lin successfully completed his studies. Now graduated, he vows to be a humanitarian doctor and treat all patients like his own family. Carefully putting on socks for a patient, from the moment Ling Hanlong became a doctor, he has viewed patients like his own family. Mr. Zhen Ying often reminds us to be a humanitarian doctor and strive for excellence in what we do. However, the road to actualizing his dreams was once a bumpy one. Ling's parents divorced when he was 10, and he was left in the care of his father, living on the minimal income earned from his father's grocery store. For Ling, his dream of becoming a doctor always seemed out of reach. Having graduated with flying colors in his final year of high school, Ling was accepted into Gajah Mada University, where he chose to study medicine. However, the costly tuition fees forced the father-son pair to sell some of their furniture in order to cover the expense. Although they were able to cover the school fees for one semester, the fees for the next were nowhere in sight. Yet at City Monthly opened a window of opportunity for the struggling family. Tsuji not only provided scholarship aid to Ling, but also subsidized medical costs for his father's diabetes. Tsuji's help saved my life and also helped my son complete his studies and obtain his degree. Thankful for Tsuji's help, Ling invited volunteers to attend his graduation ceremony. I wanted to share my joys with them because they helped me actualize my dream. To me, they are family. He has always been very considerate of others and he always aspired to be a doctor. Now that he is, I have to start calling him a great healer. Transforming the love received from Tsuji into love for his patients, for Ling, this is putting compassion and filial piety into action, qualities his father is truly proud of. I believe Tsuji's seed of love that was planted in his heart has blossomed. Now he will walk the Tsuji path more steadfast than ever.
We turn our camera to the United States. Since the beginning of 2013, every Thursday, city volunteers in Southern California regularly gather at the Abraham Lincoln Elementary School in Orange County to prepare food packs, which are then distributed to underprivileged students on Friday. The school has also established a charity society where fifth graders actively involve themselves and lend a helping hand to the volunteers. Let's take a look. <laughs> Putting on a city volunteer vest and picking up supplies, every Thursday, 25th graders of Lincoln Elementary School in Orange County, California, give up their playtime to volunteer instead. They really demonstrate city's humanitarianism when they have our volunteer vests on. Over the past four months, these 20 students have become more mature in the way they think. Since 2013, each Friday, city volunteers distribute 60 food packs to underprivileged students at the school so that they won't go hungry over the weekend. Every Friday, my students go home with a backpack full of food that they can enjoy over the weekend. We are very excited to have you at Lincoln Elementary School helping our families become better able to learn. When our students have this food to eat over the weekend, they're able to perform better when they come back to school the next Monday morning. Reaching out and spreading happiness around the school, both givers and receivers reap much spiritual reward, and this moving story is broadcasted on local television stations. I love um, doing teamwork because I don't get to do it alone. With the heart to help others, this kindness has created a ripple of love throughout Lincoln Elementary School. Returning to Malaysia, the Dai Educare Center in Malacca organized a ceremony for students to show their love and gratitude to their parents. At this annual event, students not only had a chance to wash feet and serve tea for their parents, but also experienced their mother's pain during childbirth through a game. Here's more. <laughs> Using all their strength to get through the clothes, students of the Malacca Dai Educare Center are playing a game to experience the process of childbirth. I got stuck because I'm too big. The purpose of this event is to inspire children to show their gratitude to parents. At this annual ceremony, students seize the chance to show their love and gratitude to parents by feeding them food and serving them tea. Thank you, Mommy, for giving birth to me. Thank you, Daddy and Mommy. Seeing how their children help them wash their feet, many parents are overwhelmed to tears. When my son is washing my feet, I thought of my father. When he was in the hospital, I also helped wash his feet, but now I don't do it anymore. After we have our own family, we often pay less attention to our parents. I think we should show more care for them. Showing their love and gratitude, these children enjoy one of the most precious moments with their parents. Tainan City volunteer Liang Jinju has been promoting evening recycling within Tainan's Anding Harbor District for the past six years. Thanks to his efforts, three nearby boroughs have joined the evening recycling program and 30 people among those volunteering have signed up for the Buddhist NGO's volunteer training course. Liang says that by doing recycling at night, those that work during the day will also have a chance to join and start to walk the Bodhisattva path. The arrival of the recycling truck signals the start of another recycling event. Many of these recycling volunteers hold full-time jobs during the day, but have still decided to use their evenings to help protect the planet. At home, there is nothing to do but watch TV, but by coming out here, I can help to protect our planet. It's like what the master said, do the right things. I just eat dinner a bit earlier so I can make it here. In the morning, as I take my dog for a walk, if I see recyclables, I will pick them up. All this helps our Mother Earth. These evening recycling events in Tainan's Anding district have been ongoing for six years and currently can be found in the district's Anding Harbor, Su Tsuo, and Anjia boroughs. The program also brought forth 30 new training volunteers.
This evenly recycling event started in the Anding Harbor District. We hope that we can get something similar going in the Lai Hai Liao District. Let's see if that works out. The evening recycling events have been a big hit with nearby residents, as they allow them to spend their evenings in a meaningful manner, while also making new friends along the way. In our next report, we go to Taiwan Shilin Recycling Station to meet 78-year-old Zhao Chiu Xiu Luan. Six years ago, her husband passed away, and with her daughter in Canada, the senior suddenly felt alone in the world. However, Cixi volunteers were there by her side during this difficult time, helping the senior recover from the loss of her husband. Now the grandma is finding life anew at the recycling station, where she helps as a kitchen volunteer several times a week. Chopping up vegetables and cooking up a storm in the kitchen. This has been 78-year-old Zhao Chou Xiu Luan's patient for the past six years. I do a little good now. After I pass away, things will be a bit better. Although now calm and collected, in fact, Grandma Zhao Chou Xiu Luan just recently stepped out of the shadow of her husband's death. Her daughter is in Canada, and after her husband passed away, the daughter contacted the Department of Religious Affairs, then asked us local volunteers to look after her. These brothers and sisters helped chant sutras during the funeral. That is how I first met Ji. With her husband passed away, a phone call from Zhao Chiu Xiuluan's daughter set the stage for the beginning of a new life as a volunteer. My daughter asked Sister Tong that if they have any volunteer activities, to please bring me along. Before, she was always at home, closed off from the world. When she took a step inside Ziji, she immediately devoted herself wholeheartedly. As a kitchen volunteer, Zhao Chiu Xiuluan works to ensure that recycling volunteers always have fresh, healthy meals awaiting them after a day's hard work. The sister cares a lot for me, just like a daughter would be. In fact, better. Finally, at the end of the show, we return to China's Sichuan province to follow up on the quake survivors of the Ya'an earthquake two months ago. Sichi Foundation Deputy Director Wang Duanzhen led fellow volunteers to visit six local schools in Lushan area to make rebuilding arrangements. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. Have a good weekend. See you next week.